You know, it's interesting. When you really start following the Lord, there's something he puts in your heart. And that's to go share with other people what God's done for you. And you know, you do that, and then the Holy Spirit just seems to bring people together, no matter what they've done, where they've been. In fact, it doesn't matter if you're President of the United States, if you've spent a lot of time in prison, we're all lost. And God cares about each of us the same. It doesn't matter what we've accomplished in life, where we've been. And you know, over the years, as we've been preaching in the jails and prisons, we meet some characters. And Lord sakes, we got one here. I'm telling you what, he is a character. But God's got a hold of him in spite of him, in spite of it all, and has been able to use him and change him. Now, when he came, first came here, he was snorting and spitting and, you know, all that. Then all of a sudden, God got a, got a hold of it. You know, I'm ask Carl, I'm going to ask you a question. How long were you going to stay here when you first got here? One more night, that's it. And what happened? Well, that was 10 years ago. Okay, and tell I'm us about still, it. Then. And I'm still here. And I've been your, your uh, armor bearer for uh, eight of those 10 years. And I've learned more from watching you and following you the way you followed Jesus Christ. God took my heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh. And he taught me how to be generous, how to be loving, how to be kind. And all thanks to you because I watched you. I used to not save my money. And when I first came here, I'd, I'd say, I'd watch you. You had a pocket full of money, always had a pocket full of money. And I'd come to you at 2.30 and tell you, hey, I need about five or 10 bucks to go over here to Walmart and get something. I, I gotta go to the bank. Well, what happened to all that money you had? Well, I gave it away. And I learned a valuable lesson from that. I gave it away. If you give your what, what you want away, God will return it to you. And I learned that from you by watching you. And I learned how to love people and how to, how to understand people by watching you. It wasn't something you could read in a book or what John Max Maxwell could teach you. I learned it straight from you. And it's been a pleasure for these 10 years being your armor bearer and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I'm going to be here until you go. When we leave from here, I'm going with you. And I, I know that disappoints you a little, huh? But I've been the best pain in the butt you've had forever. You know, and I'm glad to be that. I'm glad to celebrate your birthday tomorrow, too. You know, it's, it's really interesting. You know, you have to be a little ornery to go to prison. In other words, I admire people that go to prison because I, I didn't have the guts to do it. In other words, they just keep on doing the same thing over and over and over, breaking the rules, breaking the law. People <laughs> along the way would warn them, and they just wouldn't stop, and they kept on going and kept on going. The next thing you know, they're in prison. Now, you old rascal, how many times you've been in prison and how many years? Four times for a total of 17 years. You've been in prison 17 years? 17 years. I'm a hard-headed rascal. I didn't learn my lesson at all. You well, know. you know, it's kind of interesting. You got out when you came here. You started out a little feisty, but little by little, God's given you a heart. You care about people now. Yeah, absolutely. God's changed my whole life. I used to ask God and tell him, say, you're, you're not changing me. You're not doing nothing for me. And the next thing I know, he said, well, didn't you like to do drugs? Well, yeah, I did them for 45 years. I said, well, but I don't like those no more. I said, did you smoke cigarettes? And I said, well, yeah, I smoked for 50 years. Got COPD, can't breathe. I don't like those at all. And I would testify not to do them anymore. And he named off a bunch of things that, that I used to love to do. And, and I got to looking back and I said, well, praise the Lord, you have changed me. I don't like to do none of that stuff no more. I like doing what I'm doing right here, hanging out with Walt. And that's what I've been doing. It's called, in your case, what he calls hanging out with Walt is being a pain in the butt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now he seems to have that personality, although he smiles and he loves people, <laughs> but he still has that personality of being a pain in the butt. Now, to me, 
One of the things about being a pain in the butt is you have to go tell other people that they need to do this and do that. In other words, you got to confront other people. And if you're a pain in the butt, then you know you're a pain in the butt. When you go tell other people, they, they, they realize now yeah. what, what this thing is, what I'm really all about. So, how's that working in your life? Well, being the number one pain in the butt in the place. I, uh, I, the way I look at it, and, I, and it's played out and played out and played out over and over again, is the message is this. If you can't get anybody else in the place to do it, send Carl. He'll take care of it. And I will. I will take care of it. I'm not scared. I will tell whatever your opinion is, whatever your rules are, we will follow those rules. Because this is your ministry, so we're going to do what you say. Well, this is God's ministry. Well, it's and yours. He I put you in thing. charge of it. Well, what I've learned is just letting God be God. Let Him get a hold of people. And then He can use. See, I think the neatest thing is, is when we submit to God, He takes us who we are. He doesn't change our personalities. He just changes us from the inside. That We no longer have a hate and a bitterness and a resentment. We have a love and a joy now. But we still have that same personality. And he can use that. Because he made us the way he made us. We all have different personalities. In your case, you're just a flat pain in the butt. You, I don't know what you, you're like when you were in prison, if you were a pain in the butt now, but as long as you've been here for 10 years, you've been a pain in the butt, and you're going to continue to be a pain in the butt, and you keep telling everybody that you're a pain in the butt. Hey, you got me convinced, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, you I you don't got know, me convinced. I don't know if we got you convinced. You, you know, got us convinced. You, you know, speaking see, of the letting, Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. So. Speaking of letting God be God, I used to, I used to sit, somebody loves you. I used to sit right across from you. Well, you sit on one side and I sat on the other. That was my seat. Nobody got in that seat because they knew it was my seat. And every time he'd get up, every service he'd say, just let God be God. And boy, I'd be so mad at him. You stupid old man, how can you stop God from being God? Well, about three months into the program, the Holy Spirit flicked me in the back of the head and said, hey, stupid. You can stop me from being me by the choices you make. And that was one of the most profound things that I had ever heard. And I couldn't believe that the Holy Spirit told me that. And I know it was the Holy Spirit because he flicked me hard. And I just said, well, you went from being a dumb old man to a road scholar so fast that it wasn't even funny. <laughs> you know, that kind of reminds me. When I was 19 years old, yeah. My dad was the dumbest man that I have ever met. Oh, I couldn't yeah. believe how stupid and dumb my dad was. Yeah. But when I got about 23, 24, all of a sudden he became brilliant. He was smart. Now, how did he learn so much so fast? Yeah. That's, that's about how I felt about you, my you know, friend. You know, this is what is so neat about Church on the Street and how just letting God be God, how he can take a bunch of old rascals like us, give us that new heart, that new mind that new understanding. Put us back in the good fight of faith and use us with our personalities. And this old rascal here, uh, what can you say? He's a good pain in the butt. Yeah, well, you're a good old rascal to be an armor bearer for too, buddy. You know, I appreciate you, I love you, and I wouldn't trade Jen for nothing in the world. Well, God help me. <laughs>